We currently have a users table and a posts table, but there is no relationship defined between them. Since we intend to store related data in these tables, we need to establish a relationship. In this case, each user can have multiple posts, but each post belongs to a single user. This is an example of a one-to-many relationship. Since we are using entity framework with a code-first approach, this means that we are going to define the relationship in our model classes and let entity framework generate the database schema accordingly. This approach allows us to control and modify our database structure directly through code. And here we just need to open the models. So we have the post and then the user. And we said that a user can have multiple posts. So down here, let us just define the navigation property, which is going to represent the one-to-many relationship. That is going to be public I collection of posts. And the name is going to be posts. Now, if you want, you can also initialize the post navigation property to be an empty list of posts. And now let us go to the post. In here we need to define two values. The first one is going to be the foreign key. And the foreign key of a post is going to be the same type as the user foreign key in here. And if you want, you can either use integer, you can use GUID, or you can even use a string. I'm just going to keep using integer. And then in here, we are just going to define that this is going to be the foreign key int user ID and then get set. After the foreign key, if you want to be able to load the user data whenever you load the pause, you need to also define here the navigation property. And this is going to be public user, user, and then get set. Now, what we have done here so far is enough for the entity framework to automatically recognize this as a one-to-many relationship based on the conventions. For example, and here we have user and the name is user. And then up here we have user ID and the framework is going to check for this model. We'll check the ID and that way is going to set up a one-to-many relationship. However, if you want to explicitly configure this relationship, then you need to navigate to AppDB context and do that inside the onModel creating method. That is just a default method of the DB context. And if you want to basically just override the method of the base class, you use the override keyword. So in here, protect it. And then override void on model creating. This is the model builder. And by using the model builder, I'm just defining that for the entity user, we're going to have many posts and each post has one user. The foreign key for each post is going to be the user ID. The onModel creating is just a method in the entity frameworks DB context class that allows you to configure model relationships, constraints, and other mappings to the database schema. So basically this is used to just customize how the entity framework maps your entity classes to the database schema. Since we added some code that we want to use to change the database schema, we need to push these changes to the database. And this is the last step, which is to create and to apply migrations. I'll just go here, add migration. The name is going to be added user post relation. And that is just a name, but the clearer the name is, the better you know what you intended with a migration. So it was created. And if you check the code, you can see that we are adding a new column, user ID in table post. This is not nullable. This migration also creates an index for the post table. The column is going to be the user ID. And the last one is that it adds a foreign key of user ID to the post. Now let us apply this migration. For that, just update and then database. Everything was successful. Let us just go to Survey Explorer, go into Refresh the Tables, and if you open the post, you can see that we have the user ID.